morning box, I'm filming under the car light because it is still dark outside. And that's when you know it's winter because it's dark outside after I leave Starbucks. Uh, I need to stop by the store real quick um, to pick up, it's like the most random thing, I need to pick up a pencil sharpener um, for my eyeliner because I had one, it disappeared along with it, the lipstick that I was trying to get rid of, which is why my lips haven't been that bright red intense color lately <laughs> um, but I I need a pencil sharpener because I need it for my eyeliner or I can't use it so I'm gonna swing probably by Walmart because I don't think CVS is open yet and pick up a new pencil sharpener and then I'm going to head home I like to do things before Rosalind is awake I don't know if you guys feel that way or maybe I think most parents do things after the kid goes to sleep leave one parent at home and then the other parent runs out and goes grocery shopping or whatever it is I'm just a morning person which is why I do it but it's just so much easier to get stuff done when you don't have a little one and I find myself wishing that um, certain things were open either late at night or early in the morning so I can get stuff done like I've been meaning to get to the post office for a while I have a package that I need to send it's all addressed and everything but I need to get stamps on it and I need to have it weighed um, and I haven't done it because I don't I just don't want to pack Rosalind into the car and have her wait at the post office because there's I think that the post office is like one thing that kids just hate hello box how are you today Good, I'm glad to hear that. I hope you're doing well. If you're not, I'm sorry to hear that, but I hope this vlog cheers you up. Uh, so, I am finishing up some work right now. Uh, the stuff I was working on with math team, uh, turned it into the principal, and he was like, this is a good job. Yeah. <laughs> so, thumbs up for doing uh, awesome work uh, and having an awesome team. My, my teammates are really, really awesome when it comes to all sorts of collaborative work. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, uh, today was a pretty, pretty normal, relaxed day. Nothing too exciting happened. Um, I got a little bit off track with a student who asked me a bunch of questions, and I was like, okay, let me try and answer as many of these as I can while staying on topic. Like, for example, I explained how uh, to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius, and uh, I'll film a little bit about that, and we'll link it somewhere else. So those of you interested in my explanation, you can see that. Um, but asked about that. He asked about... Um, a couple of things like physical properties, chemical properties. He asked to know about why why the alkali metals explode when they're exposed to water. And so it was a very productive conversation, but um, I think we were maybe a little bit distracting some of the surrounding students. I was like, okay, we need a, let's, let's get focused, get back to work, okay? Um, so, but it's, it's nice when you have a student that is actively interested and engaged in the material and the content. Um, he's going through chemistry right now. And so that was, that was always good, that's good. Okay, so those of you that want to know um, how I teach how to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius uh, involves a little bit of math, but here's why. Okay, or here's how I do it, okay? So first off, we start off establishing uh, water. So both Fahrenheit and so Celsius especially was you know, created because of uh, attributes of water, boiling point and freezing point, okay? Now water inherently doesn't change. It boils at a certain amount of energy and it freezes at a certain amount of energy. And so for Celsius, it's really simple. The rest of the world uses it, uh, except for the US and uh, like one other country, but 100 degrees Celsius is when it boils, zero degrees is when it freezes. In the US though, we say water freezes at 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, the, the amount of energy difference here is the same. In both cases at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and zero degrees Celsius, you still have a freezing point of water and you have boiling at 212 degrees and 100 degrees Celsius. So from here to here is 180 degrees difference for Fahrenheit. And from here to here, that distance is 100 degrees Celsius. And actually, I, re I wrote this wrong. This is supposed to be uh, Celsius right there. Let me fix that. 100 degrees Celsius, okay? Um, now, keep in mind, this is not saying 180 degrees is equal to 100 degrees Celsius. Um, what it's saying is that the distance here, this change, is the same as this amount of change, okay? So, with that, we can go ahead and say that, well, the change in Fahrenheit temperature is equivalent to the change in Celsius. So, 180 degrees change is equal to 100 degrees change. We just simplify by dividing both sides by 20. And so, 180 divided by 20 is 9. 100 divided by 20 is 5. And so, we have this kind of conversion factor. So, we can plug it in. 
and we get this. We get zero degrees at freezing times nine degrees Fahrenheit over degrees Celsius, the Celsius cancels, okay? And we're left with Fahrenheit, but nine degrees uh, over Fahrenheit over five degrees times zero is just zero, not 32. So we have to add in a 32 to make this work, okay? So we get zero degrees Celsius plus, or times nine degrees Fahrenheit over five degrees Celsius, and then we add a 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and we get 32. Now we can generalize that over here. Okay, so we get this, this beauty right here. So we have here, okay, whatever you have, your X amount of degrees Celsius that you're gonna convert from to what you're starting in. So you start in Celsius, you multiply by nine fifths, and then you add 32 PEMDAS, right? And then you get out Fahrenheit. Well, what if we wanna go backwards from Fahrenheit to Celsius? What we're gonna do is we just do it algebraically, okay? So we subtract 32 from both sides, okay? And then the 32 here, these cancel, and we're left with X degrees Celsius times nine degrees Fahrenheit over five degrees Celsius. And again, the Celsius in this situation would cancel, okay? But we're gonna leave it there for a moment. Um, is equal to Y degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we need to get rid of this, and the easiest way to do this is multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so un control Z this uh, degree Celsius here. And so we multiply the reciprocal here. So five degrees Celsius times this is gonna cancel out. So this cancels and this cancels. And so we're left with just X degrees C on this size. And then over here, we do the same thing over here. And so we're left over here with this. We take the Y degrees Fahrenheit, we subtract 32, and then we multiply by five over nine. And that is how you figure out what the temperature is, okay, when you're given degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So if you're given Fahrenheit, this is what you do, and you pump out degrees C. If you're given degrees Celsius, you use this, and you pump this in, and then you get that. And this is why that works. So hope you enjoyed this quick micro lesson on how to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius. If you did, uh, let me know if you like more of these. And maybe give me a name if you want to see more of these for, like, I don't know, micro lessons. I think I just named it. Micro, Ken's micro lessons. There you go. Okay. But if you're interested in stuff like this, let me know in the comments down below. Um, and if not, please let me know and I will do less of them. Ken has fired up the grill. Yep. And by fired up the grill, I mean the George Foreman. What you doing, babe? I don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about it. It's actually really interesting because people don't know how to do this. I may or may not have left some water on the cast iron pan. The one you got for Christmas? And it may or may not have rusted a bit, which is not bad. I mean, you can find a 50 year old one and it can be covered in rust and still fix it. It's just a lot of elbow grease, and that's what I'm You've doing. been, I've actually timed you, you've been doing this for over 20 minutes. Yeah. Trying to scrub it. Yeah. So how do you clean a cast iron pan? There's a lot of ways to do it. The most simple though is you need something really, really abrasive. So still, well, I have a copper scrub pad that'll work. That's what I found. Um, but something that would normally tear the coating off of like a non-sig pan that you would never use in that, that's what you want to use. And you literally are scraping the entire top layer of the pan off um, and all of the rust and anything else on there off and getting to the base layer of iron, which is one of the reasons why I really wanted a cast iron pan because they're pretty much indestructible. Mr. Kim, can you use soap on a cast iron pan? You can. Yes, Mama. Yes, Mama. Hey. Why are you apologizing? Because you interrupted? No. It's okay. Uh-oh. Oh, the light's turned off. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Here you go. You can use soap on a cast iron pan, which is a common myth. So, as long as you don't use a scour pad, but if you, if you use a brush and, or like a sponge and, a, and, a, and soap on a cast iron pan, you're not going to damage the, the coating that a lot of people are like, re that's why they don't want to wash your cast iron pan with, with soap and water is because of the oil. But when the oil is heated to a certain temperature and is left or extendedly, um, it actually call, it fuses together and does something called polymerization. And that is a very, very kind of tough coating, and that's the actual non-stick. So once you have that, that bonds to the top layer of the iron as well as to itself, and that will not easily come off, which is why I'm having to scrub so hard to get things off. And he is using an abrasive, salt. As an abrasive and polish. Mm -hmm. Which and, works very effectively. And then and soap, of course. So. Yeah. So 
There you go, chemistry with Mr. Kim. I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I heard you had chemistry with Mr. Kim earlier today. A little bit, if they click the link. Oh, are we doing separate videos for that? Well, it's like five minutes, so yeah, we should do separate videos. And not everybody's gonna wanna see it. We might include it. We'll see. How are you feeling? My arms hurt. From scrubbing the pot? Yeah, from scrubbing the pot. I'm sorry. Actually, technically it's scale, but yeah. In other news, I don't know where my camera is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This... Oh, did your burrito fall? What? It's floppy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. It's a weird way to describe a burrito, Ken. <laughs> it's just... It's, look, it's... <laughs> Um, I I filmed a whole bunch today, and the last time I filmed, I know I was in the house. Oh, oh are you okay? Uh -oh. Tripped over your shoes. Yeah. Uh I don't know where I put the camera. I know it's somewhere in this house. I know it's somewhere around there. And my mom got me these really cool little things for Christmas. I put one on my keys, and I needed to put the other one on the camera so that when I lose it, I can basically call it, and an alarm will go off. Uh, but I didn't put that on the camera yet, and now it's missing. And I know we'll find the camera, I'm not worried about that, but what I'm more worried about is that we may have lost footage. Um, I mean, not like permanently, but I don't think I'm going to find it. I don't know if I'm going to find it before I have to edit tomorrow morning. So, that's not good. Um, sorry if this vlog is really short and not interesting. Maybe we will insert that clip of Ken teaching you guys about science. Hey Box, hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's vlog. If you did, give us a thumbs up down below. If you're new around here, go ahead and subscribe. We do this every single day. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye guys.